Good morning, believers. Good morning, Israel. Good evening. Good afternoon, whatever time it is. And when you're listening to this video, J.D. Nigel, Word of Truth, Bible Teaching with Jeff Deloach. Coming to you from Norma Gibbs Butterfly Park in world-famous Huntington Beach, California, Surf City. All praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, the only begotten Son, and the Holy Spirit. I pray you're all doing well. I pray for you all. I pray for all of us that are walking with the Lord, waiting for His appearance and His love to envelop us. Amen. All right. Um, So, we've been talking about the temple. Um, Solomon, the seed of David, the seed. Um, the descendant of David, Solomon, the son of David, who became the third king of Israel. And built the physical temple that represents our spiritual home. The new Jerusalem, the, the house of God, the house of bread, that city of peace, Jerusalem. And um, how... This king of Tyre, Hiram, who, ha, huh, it just came to me. Hiram and Solomon made a treaty to build the temple. Hiram represents the world. He's the one that got all the materials. He secured the world. So this is something I just realized right now. And you can laugh, you can scoff, you can mock, you can go, man, he just loves Satan, doesn't he? Um, Hiram, the king of Tyre, it just came to me. The king of Tyre is um, Satan. So Hiram, who is worshipped and venerated by the Freemasons. He's mentioned in their literature continually, in their in their um yeah literature their their belief system. Hiram. Um. So a lot of these things that we're learning, um, that people are going, that's not the Bible, J.D. Nigel. That's not what my pastor said. Well, your pastor doesn't know anything. That's the problem. And the things he does know, I hope he's teaching what he does know and not what he doesn't know because I just, it came to me, it settled with my soul that Hiram, because he represents the material world, he represents everything on the earth. That's why he was able to find all the materials because he's Satan. He's the god of the planet. He's the, he's the king of this place. The king of Tyre, Hiram, made a treaty with Solomon, Jesus, to create this Physical plus spiritual reality that we find ourselves in. You understand what I'm saying? And so the next temple, this new Jerusalem is going to be
Um, I don't know how physical it's going to be. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's going to be a lot more physical than we think. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, we know the celestial versus the terrestrial is two different things. There's celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, and I'm not going to go into that right now, but I would say there's still going to be a physical element. Otherwise, this story wouldn't be in the Bible about Hiram, the man of the man of the earth, the king of the earth, and Solomon, the king of heaven, Jesus Christ, the um, the king of spirits, the king of kings. Um, they wouldn't be together. They wouldn't be making a treaty. They made a treaty. So anyway, um, I'm going to move forward because sometimes these spiritual things, when they land on me, it's like a ton of bricks and I don't know how to, um, I don't know how to teach it because it just popped up and I don't know the, enough of the backstory to, um, continue. So I'm just going to suggest to you that Hiram is Satan. And when they say Solomon had the ring of Solomon, that ring that he controlled demons with, um, yeah, he took control of he took control of this spiritual realm for a while through a treaty with Hiram, the Satan. So these things that I've been saying about Satan, um, I, they're not completely fleshed out. I don't know their relationship. It's not really my business. I'm just here to explain to you that whatever they're doing, that's if 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 I am not privy to it, if I can't speak of it, then um, no one else should be saying anything about it at, at all. And that's what people don't have enough fear. They don't have enough fear. Of the Lord they don't get it so the Lord puts these stories in the Bible to get you to understand God can do whatever the fuck he wants if he wants to buddy up with Satan to get his will accomplished that's what he's gonna fucking do so I'm gonna not I'm gonna try not to start cussing and getting pissed but um, the stupidity out here is <sighs> hard to deal with anyway so I continued reading about Solomon building the temple with Hiram and there's some interesting stuff here it's the construction of the temple it says and it came to pass on um, 1st Kings 6 um, and it came to pass in the 418th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel so there you have that number four again um, I was the fourth son of David, and I'm not going to look too much into the number four because I know there's going to be something that's going to twist me up, and I, I'm not ready for that right now. I'm, I'm just putting that in your head so when we find out what it is about being the fourth son of David, when I come back and go, oh, okay, well, I'm ready. This is what it means to be me um, with the number four. Then then you'll know that I was telling the truth that, you know, that's this is how it works. Um, in the month of Ziph, which is the second month that he began to build the house of the Lord, in the house which King Solomon built for the Lord, the length was three cubits, and the breadth 20 cubits, and the height 30 cubits. And the porch before the temple of the house, 20 cubits, was the length according to the breadth of the house and 10 cubits was the breath before the house in the house he made windows of narrow lights um so i'm gonna um read what they say about the temple and the porch so you can understand the entrance and this house that we're trying to enter into the it's the lights were narrow the lights are on but is anybody home the lights were narrow, it says. 
And for the house, he made windows of narrow lights. So that harkens back to narrow path. We're on a narrow path into this temple. People think, oh, I'm not on the broad road. Oh, yes, you probably are. So down below it says the temple is called a house for it was the place where a transcendent sovereign and holy God condescended to dwell with his people. The basic plan of the temple was that of the previous tabernacle, except for the doubling of the length and width of the sanctuary and the increasing of its height for the temple site. See Samuel 24, 2 Samuel. So the temple is this New Jerusalem that Solomon built as is an example for us. Why did he why was it bigger than the tabernacle? Because the Gentiles were coming in. There's gonna be there's gonna be more holy people. Um and this is the this is the point I wanted to make to you folks. Um this is Israelite teaching and I know a lot of you are like, who the hell cares about Jacob and Benjamin and Ephraim and Joseph? And um, uh, it's 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 very important to me because I have to I have to be in control. I have to have authority. I have to understand who I am, where I come from, what my purpose is, and so. I, that's that's why I study these things, and you can either enjoy it or turn off the channel. I don't know. Come back when I'm talking about the rapture, and you can yell at me about that. But anyhow, um, it says, uh, verse 6, 3, and the porch before the temple of the house, 20 cubits, so on and so forth. It says down below, the porch was situated before the front of the temple on the east side. So when the Lord comes back, he's coming into the temple from the east. Look to the east. He will he will come out of the east like a bolt of lightning, right? Something like that. According to 721, at the side of the entrance of the porch, porch were erected two freestanding pillars. The pillar on the right or south side was named Jachin. And the one on the left, or north side, was named Boaz. The directions given with regard to the temple are from the God's, are from God's vantage point in the Holy of Holies, the most holy place, looking toward, looking outward from the west to the east. So when you're in the Holy of Holies, when you're in the temple, when you are in a spiritual mindset, when you are in the tabernacle and you are residing in this middle safe dwelling area inside the house, you're in the room, you're in the room, you're in the room of David, you're in the room. Um. God's vantage point is from the west looking outward towards the east. So when you think of the tabernacle, <clears throat> who dwelt on the west side of the tabernacle? Three tribes on the west, three tribes on the east, three tribes on the north, three tribes to the south. Three times four equals 12. So which three tribes were looking out from the west to the east? And these are the things that keep coming back, coming back. The truth is not going to change. And so I've said it in the past in these teachings that The two sons of Jacob, everyone wants to talk about Judah. But the two sons of Jacob, the two tribes that
were the most prestigious, most authoritative, the ones that were closest to God because why? Why was Joseph and Benjamin, why were those two tribes, why was it Joseph and Benjamin dwelt on the west side? So the three tribes that dwelt on the west side of the tabernacle were Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh. These are the sons of Rachel and Jacob. Joseph got a double portion. He got Ephraim and Manasseh. So, if you're dwelling on the west side of the tabernacle, you have the same vantage point. If you're of Benjamin, if you're of Ephraim, if you're of Manasseh, if you're of the children of Rachel, if you're of the children of Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin, you have been given wisdom, knowledge, perspective, that is of a higher order you're you're looking from the same vantage point as the Lord you see things you see things spiritually because you're looking from the same vantage point of God and so when I tell you when I say being of Benjamin is very important this is this is Um, a dominion, it's a authority, it's a power, it's a anointing, a purposing. That's going to crush, it's going to crush a lot of people. Because the same reason Jesus is so going to come back so angry and, de and destructive and he's going to put all the enemies under his father's feet as a footstool. It's the same pattern that when you look at me and you go, who says you have authority, J.D. Nyjah? Who says that you're Benjamin? Who says so? Um, your spirit has to say whether that's so or not. All I can do is say, it is that. And so, Jay Hall, if you're still here, bro, man, you're a stubborn dude. People, don't be stubborn. Don't be stubborn. I'm, I'm trying to help you. What can I do for you? Anyhow. So, the interesting part of this, um, these passages in 1 Kings about the temple... Let me find it right here. Um, ah, the house was made. Okay, right here. Next verse. And against the wall of the house, he built chambers round about against the walls of the house round about both of the temple and of the oracle. And he made chambers round about. So what it says, temple, house. Um, house is the temple. Um, and the temple is the sanctuary. And number three, the oracle is Debir. Here, the inner room of the temple, elsewhere called the most holy place. So when you think of oracle, you think of the most holy place. What is this oracle? It's the ability to speak from the perspective of a spiritual understanding Everyone is given a measure of faith, a measure of understanding. Um, I'm busting down the doors and 
People are pissed. People don't like it. Who is this fucker? Why is he busting down the doors? I have to. That's my job. I'm purposed to do that. So how am I doing it? I'm doing it with the hammer of the word. I'm ha I'm smashing shit. And I don't care. I don't care. I'm smashing everything. It's how it has to be. Um, so, um, a covenant reminder and then I'll close out. And this is interesting to you. This is the part before I close out. I wanted to get this. Um, verse 11, second Kings chapter six and the word of the Lord came to Solomon saying concerning this house, which you were building, if you will walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and keep all my commandments to walk in them, then will I perform my word with thee, which I spoke unto David, your father. So what's he saying? Dude, can you hear me? Um, I will make this word perform. I will perform the word. I speak it. It will be performed. Because that's what he says. Then will I perform my word with thee, with you. Um, 12, let me get it. Um, promise, temple. That The word is the promise. So when I name my channel Word of Truth, you can promise. I'm promising you it's true. Um, and I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the house and finished it. So down here at the bottom, it talks about this verse. And I don't know where these people get this idea, but it, that's not what it says. It says, and the word of the Lord came to Solomon saying, concerning this house, so on. Down here at the bottom it says, <laughs> since it is recorded that the Lord appeared personally only three times to Solomon, these words probably came to Solomon by a prophet. What the hell? What? what why, why does it have to be he appeared? I've never seen him. But he speaks to me. I've never seen him. I've seen him in the clouds. I've seen him in visions. Um, but he never appeared and then spoke. It's either I see him or I hear him. And when I see him, it's in a vision. I don't, I don't go, hey, what's up, Lord? Wow, good to see you. It's not like the transfiguration or anything. So when it says, and the word of the Lord came to Solomon saying, where the hell are these people coming up with the idea? Well, it must be, it was probably a prophet that told him that. What the fuck? I hate to be a dick, but no. Um, Solomon, I don't think Solomon, I don't think there's one verse. <laughs> I would say, spiritually speaking, and this is where I'm explaining to you these things that are probably true. Because in my spirit, it doesn't make sense that a prophet needs to speak to Jesus. He is the spirit of prophecy. So these are the type of things that just... I, now I'm going to have to look and see if a prophet ever spoke to Solomon. Um, huh. I, don't, I, I would doubt it. Why would the Lord have to have a prophet speak to Solomon? He is the prophet. <laughs> what the hell? So that, I just wanted to get that. Um, dang. Um, like the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies was partitioned off from the holy place. Within the most holy place rested the Ark of the Covenant. The symbol of God's reigning presence among his people. Reigning presence, authority, dominion, so on and so forth. The Holy of Holies is the spiritual perspective. 
Um, before I close out, I wanted to say something about um, Jesus being the son of God, not the son of Joseph real quick. I don't have a whole lot of time, but when the angels are singing in Revelation, holy, holy, holy be the Lamb of God who um, has the authority to open the book. He has, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. What does the word holy mean, people? Brothers and sisters, family? Holy means separate, set apart, holy. So how do we know Jesus isn't the son of Joseph? Because he's holy. He's set apart. He's not of sperm. These black Hebrew Israelites, their stupidity is just off the charts. It's, I'm going to try not to let it fuck up my head and my spirit because it does. It hurts. Their stupidity is so unbelievable that it, it causes um, dissonance. It causes a break in reality. It causes um, gas lighting. It's, it's a psychotic. It's Babylon. It's, it's confusion. These guys are just pure confusion. So, J.D. Nigel, word of truth. I love you people. My family, the Lord's family. Let's go home. They, the temple's built. The house is ready. Coming directly from the room. Son of David, Adonijah, I'm out.